What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new, very interesting mini PC from Menace Forum known as the UM560. So this is something I've had my eye on for the last couple months since they announced it, and it's got a few tricks up its sleeve. Now aside from using one of my favorite mobile APUs, the 5625U, this actually can work in single cable operation mode, and if you're not familiar with that, Basically, if your monitor or display supports USB Type-C video input and PD charging, all you need is one cable to connect this to an external display, making for a very clean setup. Now, we'll definitely take a look at that in a second, but inside of the box, you're also going to receive a mounting bracket. This does support an extra 2.5-inch SSD, comes with all the cabling and mounting hardware you need. It also comes with a 65-watt USB Type-C brick. This is a PD charger, which will power the mini PC. We've also got the PC itself and a nice little stand here to set this up. And once it's set up, it actually looks really, really nice. So when it comes to the single cable operation mode, also known as alt mode, a lot of viewers have actually been asking about this on a ton of different mini PCs I've taken a look at. In the past, we've taken a look at a smaller single board computer that offered this same kind of feature. But when it comes to these more powerful mini PCs, we haven't seen this yet until the UM560. Taking a quick look at the I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, two USB Type-C ports, and only one of these up front here supports display out. But moving around to the back, we've got that USB Type-C alt mode port, which will allow us to power the unit and get video out plus data. We've got a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, two full-size HDMI ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. So we really do have a lot of I.O. on this mini PC. Menace Forum will be offering this in a few different configurations, from bare bones all the way up to 32GB of RAM and a 512GB M.2 SSD. But the basic specs of the UM560 are as followed. We've got the Ryzen 5 5625U. This is a great little mobile APU. We've got 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.3GHz, and a boost all the way up to 4.4. Built-in Radeon Vega 7 graphics at 1800 MHz. You can pick this up with 8 gigs all the way up to 32. This one here has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz. And we've also got a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It also has Wi-Fi 6 and that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet around back. And this one came pre-installed with Windows 11, but you can install basically anything on here as long as the operating system supports an x86 CPU, like Linux. Now I want to go ahead and demo that alt mode. So the monitor I'm working with here is a BenQ 32280U. It's got USB Type-C and PD charging through that USB Type-C port, and obviously it's going to support display through USB Type-C. It'll do up to 65 watts PD charging, and that's plenty for this little PC. And all I need to do is go ahead and plug it in with this one cable, press the power on the PC, and it's going to boot up. We're going to get power to the unit and video to the monitor. And the alt mode USB Type-C port will do 4K60 out. So we've got 4K60 here with this BenQ display. I've also got a wireless keyboard plugged into one of the USB ports on the mini PC. But if your monitor did have extra USB ports, you could always plug it directly into there because this will also transfer data from whatever you have it plugged into. So real quick, I'll just show you. We are at 4K and I'm going to go ahead and turn scaling all the way off. It's going to be really hard to see like this, but uh, it does work. So we're at 4K, no scaling, 60 FPS over USB Type-C. And when it comes to overall Windows 11 performance, this thing is really, really snappy. I mean, we've got Wi-Fi 6 built in, or you could go the Ethernet route if you want to. And we've got plenty of power for web browsing, 4K video playback. You want to do some photo editing, some light video editing with this. I wouldn't do a ton of 4K streams with it. But editing and exporting 1080p video is going to be fine on the 6-core, 12-thread Zen 3 Ryzen CPU. It's got a lot of power for what we have here. And the TDP on this out of the box is at 30 watts, but you can up it to 45. Now keep in mind, if you're going to go up that high using alt mode, you need to make sure that the monitor or display supports 65-watt PD charging. Otherwise, you're just not going to provide enough power to the mini PC. But 99% of the monitors on the market right now with USB Type-C alt mode built in will work with the stock configuration just fine. And by the way, this little PC handles 4K video like a dream. 4K60 from YouTube, or you could run it natively from an internal or external drive. It's really up to you. 
So like I mentioned, they will be selling these bare bones, so you will have to add your own storage and RAM if you don't opt for their higher end models, but it's super easy to get in here. We've got dual channel SODIMM RAM running at 3200 megahertz, and you can easily access that M.2 drive to upgrade it. Plus it comes with the cabling and hardware to add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom plate. So it can definitely be used as an everyday PC, but the main thing I wanted to check out was some gaming and emulation. And the first one we have here is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, we're at 1080p medium settings. Not bad at all, and I've had really good luck with this game on these Ryzen APUs. So if you did want to play some of your favorite fighting games on this mini PC, like Street Fighter V, Injustice 2, and even Mortal Kombat 11 at low settings, it runs great. Moving over to GTA V, at 1080p normal settings, we can get an average of 64 FPS with this, so turning V-Sync on will lock it at 60, and you can have a really great time with it. Or, if you want a little more out of it, drop that resolution down to 900p and get an average of around 73 out of it. Here we have Forza Horizon 5, 720p low, and I probably should have taken this up to 900p because with it set up like this, we get an average of 75 FPS, so it'll definitely handle 900p low on this system. Was definitely hoping for a little more out of God of War, but here it is at 720p low. And uh, with this, you probably just want to lock it at 30 from the God of War settings itself, because we only got an average of 34 FPS. And the final game we have here is Elden Ring 720p low. We only got an average of 33 FPS out of this, was a little disappointed with the performance, and as you can see from Afterburner, we're pulling close to 42 watts out of this APU. Now it's time to take a look at some emulation, and the Ryzen 5 5625U does a really great job. Here's PS2 using PC SX2 1080p with the DirectX 11 back end. We've got Ratchet and Clank running at full speed. The easier to emulate stuff for PS2 can go up to 4K. Next on the list, we've got some Wii U. Here's Bayonetta 2 Vulcan back in running great at 1080p. I also tested out Breath of the Wild, and that one runs fine at 1080p 30fps. It just won't handle 1080p 60, but you could drop it down to 720 and play it at 60 all day. The three worlds all needed rulers. Most of all, ours. And the one that ruled the chaos. Next on the list, we've got some PS3 emulation using RPCS3 and the Vulcan back in. So yeah, I mean, that 5625U really does a great job with PS3. With the harder to run stuff, you might need to do a couple little tweaks with the settings, but it will run most of these games at full speed, 720p. Even something like Skate 3, which does require a pretty beefy little APU or CPU to run, but this little setup can run it at 60, and if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that that APU has hit a maximum temperature of around 91 degrees Celsius, which is getting a bit toasty. But the fans in this haven't kicked up like super high, so I think if you don't mind a little noise, you could go into the BIOS and up the fan curve here, because on their website they do describe this as a whisper quiet PC, and it's actually really really quiet even at this temperature here. And the final one here is the Yuzu emulator, I don't like to show gameplay, but we do have Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. You can see that this is running at 60, we do get a few dips every once in a while when those shaders are caching, but you'll be good to go with Switch emulation also. I always like to take a look at total system power consumption, and keep in mind this is set at a 45 watt TDP, but from the wall at idle it pulls around 12 watts, average gaming jumps up to 47, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out all 6 cores, 12 threads, and the built in Radeon 7 GPU was 61 watts. If you were to run this at the stock configuration of 30 watts, it'd be much less, but I personally love getting the most performance out of these mini PCs. Taking a look at CPU temps, again we're at 45 watts here, idle it's around 40, average gaming 80, and while running Cinebench for 10 minutes we hit 94 degrees Celsius which is thermal throttle and I kind of expected it stressing everything out, 
but I'm not sure if this fan hit 100% because it is definitely a quiet little setup. Overall, it's a great performer. I personally love the look of this thing. They've done a great job designing it, and it especially looks super sleek when it's set up in this stand. Having that single cable operation or alt mode built in is really awesome, but only if you have a monitor that supports USB Type-C alt mode. We get power and display out of this thing. And a lot of the newer gaming monitors that do support USB Type-C video also have full-size USB ports, so you can plug your mouse and keyboard into that. That way, all you need is a single cable to the mini PC. But overall, I think the UM560 is a great little Ryzen-powered PC, and if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description. You can pick this up bare bones, all the way up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And if there's anything else you want to see tested on this, let me know in the comments below. I'm already planning a Linux video, because I think this would make a great little Linux machine, especially running something like Manjaro, or even SteamOS 3, otherwise known as the Steam Deck OS. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.